Welcome, everybody. Today we will uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, GPUs and analytics and sort of how they play out in the market. Um, I'll sort of uh, give, in my piece, a, a market perspective just in terms of analytic systems and what's going on. But first, um, for those that may not be familiar with 451 Research, um, let me just give you a quick uh, elevator uh, pitch on who we are. Uh, we're coming up on about 20 years, um, have uh, you know probably 250, almost 300 employees. Um, we have a good portion of those, probably not, not quite half of those are analysts such as myself that are sort of researching and, and publishing uh, research on a regular basis. Uh, we also have services and other things that we do as well. Um, but uh, we have over uh, 2,000 uh, technology uh, uh, companies and vendors that we cover. And so we have a, a pretty wide swath of uh, the industries and the, and the people we cover you know, in sort of the broader uh, IT technology space. Um, we are headquarters in uh, New York City, uh, but we have offices uh, kind of distributed throughout the world. All right, so one of the things that uh, it, uh, we're, we're learning from our research is that, and it may not become as a surprise, is that enterprises in general are becoming very, very data-driven. Um, the data that, um, that they're receiving, they're finding that they can receive not only, um, you know, uh, the different kinds of devices on, uh, you know, systems and machine and other things, but they're collecting all of this data and they're figuring out and wondering how to do that. And this is a particular interesting trend in the sense that it was maybe, you know, 10 or 15 years ago where you only received so much data, but now we have so many more devices and methods and platforms in which we can get that data. And we're almost swimming in data to some extent. And so uh, as part of some of our, our uh, research, we conducted uh, a survey, and we asked some of our respondents, um, you know, looking ahead uh, 12 months from now, sort of, you know, lo looking out from a year, you know, how do you uh, consider data? Do you can, what, what kind of importance do you place on that? Now, we would assume that most organizations would say, well, I already put uh, importance on that data already. But will that importance sort of grow over time? And it turns out that most organizations realize that um, as we're sort of in this era, that data will become increasingly more valuable. And in fact, 75% of those respondents says, yes, it will. Surprisingly, some said it won't, some said it less. Um, you know, that's you know, roughly about 5%. But the predominant majority will say that, yes, data is important to me and will continue to be important to me going forward. So it's kind of an interesting touch point. Um, Again, as part of this same survey, um, we asked a series of questions. We asked them about their databases and their, and their data platforms and sort of where their data is, is, is holding. And so um, I sort of pulled out this particular question that said, of all of these databases, all of these systems that you have, what type of use cases are you sort of using those data platforms for? And again, uh, a majority, about 57%, says we're using it for analytics and business intelligence. That's uh, the majority of, of, of what we're using our, our platforms for. Yes, we, yes, we have CRRM systems and ERP systems, and we have uh, other IT infrastructure and you know, other sort of maybe specific group of business processes that we do. But analytics and business intelligence really sort of are what uh, these platform systems are, are enabling enterprises to do. So if we look back, we take sort of a, a snapshot of the industry. Um, as a research firm, we have, we've uh, sort of codified and, and categorized you know, the market. And uh, there's, in terms of analytic systems or analytic platforms, we somewhat divide it into sort of two buckets. We call them distributed data processing frameworks. Now these are frameworks or systems, sometimes you will know as Hadoop and Spark and some of these systems that sort of have di distributed file systems on them. Um, the other half of that uh, and this is represented in the blue on the chart, is analytic databases. These are data warehouses. These are other sort of analytic-based systems, you know, columnar databases and those kind of things that um, are specifically used for sort of analytics. And so we sort of uh, group both of these in. Well, you can see that um, the distributed frameworks uh, has, a, has a pretty significant CAGR going forward. But analytic databases continue to have a pretty significant CAGR as well in the sense that uh, this area continues to grow. And that would continue to support um, the two previous slides I showed you in terms of the importance of data and the fact that uh, these data platform systems are used for analytics. And so again, this is uh, in the midst of a growing market that we're in um, of how businesses do that. Um, but as it turns out, the infrastructure matters. 
Um, if we were to sort of draw a continuum on analytics, just in terms of, you know, uh, simple BI to very advanced, there is a spectrum. And uh, most of the time, organizations probably are doing uh, a combination of these different types of analytics, okay? Um, but but choosing the right system in the platform is actually very, very important. And so here's just a very high level list. I understand that there are some uh, differences and exceptions in terms of uh, platforms that are out there, but just, again, as, as sort of general guidelines, um, you know, here's, here's two things to sort of look at, because what you want to do as an organization is I want to pick the right platform for the right use case and the job I want it to do. And it's important that you, that you sort of understand sort of architecturally sort of how that plays out. So generally, analytic databases will take in structured sort of schema-based data. As we mentioned before, the distributed processing frameworks will take in sort of unstructured or sort of schemaless uh, frameworks. And understand that there's, you know, there might be some analytic databases that can take unstructured, but generally this is sort of how, how it sort of bifurcates. Now, analytic database is generally based on sort of a database management system. It's just sort of a codified um, uh, system of which you know, everything sort of works together. Data processing systems generally have sort of components, uh, oftentimes open source, and then there's optimizations built uh, to sort of get those components to sort of work together. And then at the data layer, um, again, it's sort of a database versus maybe, say, a, a file system or column of storage, and it's sort of distributed, okay? Um, again, with, with analytic databases, uh, they often will and can use proprietary or sort of specifically designed uh, hardware. Uh, we'll talk about later today, you know, uh, things like GPUs and sort of optimized storage and things like that. Um, but there's other ways to sort of optimize that as well. Um, and then distributed frameworks, uh, you know, are often known to use commodity hardware um, for a general purpose nature. Um, but again, these are sort of just general guidelines. Uh, when Hadoop first appeared in 20, in 2006, the idea was is that okay, this is this might overturn the data warehouses. Well, it turns out that it was probably more complementary in nature, and that's sort of how it's playing out now. Is that each of these systems sort of has their place, and again, in sort of the analytic spectrum. But we also believe that there's probably uh, perhaps individuals or organizations on this call today that might be operating sort of at the higher end, where they have sort of high throughput needs, uh, performance needs, or certain types of analytics, and they need certain systems to sort of address that. And we'll sort of talk about that a little bit more today. Okay, so in terms of so the, the broader analytic systems, the growth is really driven by four things. It's this idea of adaptability. The, the idea is that I want to run my analytics where I want to run them, not necessarily where the vendor tells me I should run them. Okay? Um, and this is where cloud and other sort of hybrid things sort of come into, into play. The other one is accessibility, is that uh, we now are in organizations where uh, you know, the analytics aren't just one group, and it sort of works through IT, and the IT opens a ticket, and then they run your job for you. Now it's much more uh, even sort of self-serve, but other businesses and executives and others want access to, to these platforms. And so this is sort of driving a lot of the growth. Um, you know, others, others want to get into the analytics game as well within the organization. And the other one's accuracy. The, and this idea is, is that uh, now that I have um, the data, I may want it in real time. This allows me to sort of turn and make decisions very quickly, uh, but also perhaps more accurately as well. Um, and so now I have systems in place to uh, get data that's much more timely as well. And then the, the fourth one here is acceleration. And this is sort of where we'll spend, again, the, some of our bulk of our time today. And performance and these things never really go out of style. The idea is, is that um, I want something faster. I want it sooner. I want it quicker. I want more of it. Um, and these uh, systems and these analytic systems are able to sort of handle some of that. Okay, so some of the, the trends, the, the six trends, again, I won't go over all of these. I'll spend my time probably on six today. But cloud computing obviously makes sense in a sense that that's driving a lot of the analytics use cases. Um, hybrid nature, really the idea of mixing sort of transaction and analytic processing. Um, those have normally been sort of a bifurcated systems. We're now seeing systems that sort of combine those. And then again, three, the rise of a distributed processing Hadoop. Um, you know, many of you have probably been aware or even in the midst of sort of the, the Hadoop hype cycle and, and some of the things that are, and that, that's still sort of playing out. We believe that there, there's continued growth there as well. There's also the emergence of database automation, the idea of making your database 
automate and do things for me. Um, and this is brought about with cloud and machine learning, other things sort of help with that. And then uh, machine learning as well is, is also being done within database as opposed to separate systems. And then the sixth is that we're seeing sort of hardware make its place, particularly with GPU-powered processing architectures. And these architectures then lend themselves to being able to do in a certain type of analytics that weren't necessarily uh, capable before, or at least not maybe in the time frame we wanted them. Okay, so just a, a level set, just a little quick on GPUs and CPUs. So um, the other, my other uh, panelists as well will also have some thoughts on this, but just at a high level, CPUs and GPUs have sort of fundamentally different architectures. Um, they will likely be paired together. Now, it's not uh, generally, you know, a, a GPU sort of could be, you know, uh, your entire processing unit within your system because um, there's certain things that it's good at and certain things that it's not. You'll probably always need a CPU to run the operating system and certain sort of serialized functions. And so from that standpoint, GPUs are very good at instructions that might be stepped or ordered sort of in serial, where GPUs can be very good at sort of parallel operations. They can do a lot of the same thing uh, uh, together. Okay. Um, in CPUs, we often talk of multiple cores, maybe cores in the tens, where GPUs will have sort of thousands of cores. Okay, and this sort of gives it its scaling capability. Um, but again, we'll uh, talk more about this today. But it's important to know that GPUs and CPUs, they fundamentally have their own purpose. Uh, and, the, and the strategy or the benefit is, is getting those optimized together uh, for sort of uh, you know, a, greater, a greater benefit. Again, here's some things, uh, maybe sort of a different way to look at it. In the center is your data. Is your data sort of flowing in? The traditional method has been sort of SQL with a CPU, okay? And that's still sort of functioning today. That's still a, a very strong and significant use case, okay? But there are other sort of methods I may want to do. I may want to do certain types of analytics, advanced analytics, machine learning, deep learning, these kind of things. And this is where sort of GPUs can come in and sort of augment and work alongside a CPU. And it opens up a lot of benefits for you. Uh, one is performance. One is the ability to do large um, scale of data sets, simply because you have, some, you have a lot of throughput. Um, you can do other analytics, machine learning, deep learning, uh, real time and visualization and drill downs and all these things are things that are enabled by uh, GPUs. You can do some of these on other systems, but you get significant benefits of performance when you include a GPU. Okay, so what are some of the industries that we see? Um, this is not necessarily niche uh, hardware anymore. This is things we're seeing across a plethora of verticals and industries. I won't necessarily read all these off here, but just know that um, industries and organizations have leveraging or are leveraging these in a variety of uh, uh, verticals. Um, and these are some, and I think uh, my panelists will maybe talk a little more about some of these specifics, but just let you know that uh, it's widespread. It's not just one industry, it's, it's, uh, it's across the whole. Okay. So with that, before I sort of wrap up, just maybe just end on a few points here, is that data will continue to increase and organizations will continue to try to leverage that for their own competitive advantage. Okay? Um, analytic systems, as we mentioned, both uh, sort of the RD, RDBMS-based as well as sort of the data processing frameworks, they continue to show sort of a strong CAGR over time, particularly through 2022, um, as, they had, as they address these analytic workloads. But the infrastructure, the third point, the infrastructure does matter, and it's very important organizations pick the infrastructure, the systems to address the particular analytic needs that they have. And with that, I want to thank you very much for your time. Uh, feel free to, to reach out to me uh, either directly or through social media.